Does Jesus in the Gospel of Mark want people to turn from their sins, repent, be forgiven, be saved? This is the question we're going to ask Dr. James D. Tabor today. Dr. Tabor did a course with us here, and we're talking about the Gospel of Mark. It's creating Jesus, why the Gospel of Mark was forgotten. And we're going to be diving deep into that in the course. So make sure you sign up now while there's an early bird special. You also don't want to miss out. We have something coming up, and I'm going to have Dr. Tabor explain that a little further. But here you can see, go to the landing page, www.mythvisionpodcast.com dot com forward slash first gospel right now go sign up he also has seven lectures within this course taking a deep dive dr tabor if you will tell us what we are about to do good to be with you derek i really want to get to that question but let me just say on march 5th at noon eastern time anyone who has bought the course and signed up for it is going to get an invitation to participate in a two-hour zoom meeting We'll give you the link, of course, and Derek and I will field questions and talk, but we want it to be people who've had the course so that we, we, you know, we're not introducing people to the course. We're diving into the course in even more depth. So today, even though I'm going to cover this topic, we'll really cover it in more, in a more extensive way when we get into our session. I'm thinking of it as a class. So we can have many, many people come together on a Zoom screen and we'll talk together and you'll be able to feel questions and ask questions and so forth. So here's the thing. You've got to read Mark as Mark or you would not answer this question correctly. Does Jesus want people to be saved and forgiven? Because there's a line in Mark that Matthew and Luke remove when they tell the story of why does Jesus teach in parables. It's in Mark chapter 4, where it says, and he taught them in parables, and then it gives the parable of the sower and the parable of the mustard seed and so forth. But the disciples ask, why are you teaching in parables? And the answer he gives is very unusual. I used to think when I grew up, going to Sunday school and so forth, Oh, the parables, that's so nice. Jesus wanted the people to understand. I don't know. Did you hear that, Derek? You know, they're they're kind of... I definitely heard that. To make it easy for people. And you read Mark, and it's the opposite. You know, let me read it to you. When he was alone with the 12, this is what you've got to get in Mark. You've got to get the secret teaching. And Matthew and Luke simply take that out, usually, most of the time. Uh, They ask him... Why are you teaching in parables? What, what does that even mean? And he said, to you has been given the secret of the kingdom. Now, in this course, one of the big things we try to figure out, and I don't reveal it necessarily, you know, like here it is. I, I take you through so that you have the experience that Mark wants you, the author of Mark wants you to have. To you has been given the secret of the kingdom. Those outside, it's in parables. Now, listen to this so that they may indeed see but not perceive. So people are going to listen to Jesus and not get it, and they will hear but not understand, lest they should turn again and be forgiven. Wow. Turn again and be forgiven? I thought Jesus is wanting everybody to listen and so forth. But all the way through Mark, he avoids crowds. The crowds come. He works a few miracles. And then he leaves, and privately he teaches the disciples. Now in Mark, you get to be part of that privacy. You get to come on the inside. So sometimes he takes just Peter, James, and John. Once it's Peter, James, John, and Andrew, and tells them something secretly, but the crowds and the outsiders who are not part of that little inner group don't know. Other times it's the twelve. And it happens repeatedly. Scholars are well aware of this. And many of the people listening to this will be aware of, you know, Mark's prohibitions. Don't tell who I am and don't tell what I've done. It was a secret. So what's going on here in Mark? The first thing to notice, which I've already alluded to, is you've got to realize that Mark works just as Mark 
If you try to read Matthew, which incorporates 90% of Mark, or Luke, which incorporates 85% of Mark, you're not going to get Mark because it gets embedded in to both of those larger works. And a lot of these uh, very unique things, like this verse I just read, lest they should turn and be forgiven. Matthew just, boy, I don't know what that means. Take it out. Luke, I don't know what that means. We don't want a Jesus that doesn't want people to be forgiven. After all, Luke ends with, preach forgiveness of sins to the whole world. So what is Mark doing? He's doing something very unique. For Mark, the secret of who Jesus is and what he's done is not to be understood except by those who have the secret of the kingdom. So it's actually a kind of a puzzle and a riddle that you get as you pull Mark out and just read Mark and focus simply on what Mark has. And it makes a huge difference. So that, and uh, we're going to talk more about this as we go along and you get it all in the course, someone might confess Jesus is the Christ. But that wouldn't necessarily mean that it's a true confession, like in the case of Peter. And we've done programs on that, and, and we'll expand it even more as we go on. So essentially, it's kind of, it, it's a kind of a yes and no question. Uh, if you understand, then you can turn and be forgiven. But if you're one of the outsiders, then everything is hidden. You as the reader are invited to become one of the insiders. You see? Now, there's a, it's a kind of an initiation that you get to pu get pulled into. Uh, I wrote down a few other notes. In Mark, uh, all the way through Mark up to chapter 9, there's nothing about the suffering and the death of Jesus. Actually, it starts in chapter 8 and goes through 9 and 10. And that's the key to how Mark understands Jesus as this suffering figure uh, very much like Paul in some ways, but it's private when he begins to teach that. And in fact, he even says, don't tell anyone that I'm the Christ. And he said, it says he began to teach them about his suffering. So as you start into the first eight chapters of Mark, you're kind of being pulled in as a test to see whether you're going to get it. Like you could just be reading along as sort of one of the outsiders or the crowd or even one of the dumb disciples that doesn't get it, and you just be nodding your head, and you're not even understanding what Mark is trying to communicate to you in this very cryptic way. But you get a chance, like right here in chapter 4 of Mark, he explains the parable. But guess what happens right after he explains it? They ask him, what does the parable mean? How And he says, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? Now, he's talking to the disciples, and he does explain it. And you get to hear the explanation. But it says privately, when he said to them privately, you don't get this? That's almost a question for you, the reader. If you take this course, that would be my question to you. Did you get it? Did you get it? Now, once he explains one or two of these things, you know what he does? He leaves you on your own. Then you got to figure out yourself. So it's like a hint or a clue. Are you going to pick up on it or not? And all the way through, this secrecy motif runs. And then the people who do understand, well, let me just put it this way. The disciples, the inner group, even the 12 and even Peter, James, John, and Andrew, they never understand it. In fact, they're denounced for not understanding it a number of times, four different times. Jesus, it's like he throws up his hands and says, you know, you're just not getting it, are you? And if you're not getting it, how are you going to understand anything, as he says in chapter four? That's just the first one. But there are a few people in the gospel of Mark who do understand, and they're not even named. They're kind of the unsung heroes of Mark. And in the course, we go through and begin to identify them, not by name, but like, look at this person. This person's commended. One of the things you notice in Mark is who is praised and who is condemned. The disciples are never praised, never. 
And the last verse on the disciples is the shortest verse in Mark. It's not Jesus wept. That's John. Everybody's been taught the shortest verse on, in John is Jesus wept. The shortest verse in Mark is about the 12 and they all forsook him and fled. And that's when he's arrested and put up on the cross. And they're not there, according to Mark. He's completely alone, forsaken by God, forsaken by his followers. So that's just one of the mysteries that we delve into, what, what I would call the mystery of the kingdom, the secret of the kingdom. And uh, you're going to love the course because, you know, we're not going to give you a test or anything, but you're going to be your own kind of test because as you go through, are you going to get it or not? And I'll help you as much as I can, but I'm not going to give away the secret until, you know, you do the work on getting through the course. I hope that people will go and sign up. Obviously, they can sign up at the link in the description. It's been on the screen. And of course, uh, you know, landing page, just to give people an idea of what it looks like, go down to the bottom and sign up. There are simple steps. Once you sign up, keep in mind on March the 5th, that Sunday, we're doing the Q&A live and we're going to be hanging out with you for a couple hours, get your questions in. And if we end up finding out that there's so many people present with so many questions, we'll probably do it again. But it's only for those exclusively who signed up for the Gospel of Mark course, just like it's only for those who have the inner secret that are actually going to know what Jesus is actually saying. So if you want to be part of our little mystery cult, sign up today. I really appreciate you, Dr. Tabor. And you know, people have already sent me questions and I've just said, wait, 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 wait. And you know what? A lot of the questions are really good. So people are delving into this. This is a college level course. Of course, it's not college credit and we've re reduced it down to seven lessons. But Derek, I taught, I've taught this course in some version of it for about uh, 30 years at three major universities. Uh, and I'm reflecting just that whole career of meditating and thinking about Mark. And, you know, we've got some really sharp people out there, as you know, from your own questions that you get. It's amazing. And won't it be great just to be together in a room, you know, a Zoom room? And uh, I taught on Zoom for a couple of years during COVID. And believe it or not, it's got an intimacy. It has an intimacy to it as you sort of, you know, gather around the screen and uh, we can talk together. I, I can't wait. I think it's going to be really, really exciting.